So in this demo, we'll be checking the deployment of Apache Storm. And uh, so we would be deploying Apache Storm 0.9.1, the incubating package on Ubuntu 64-bit 15.04 uh, desktop edition cluster. Um, so what are the prerequisites for this deployment? So basically, the first step that could be uh, before you are going, go ahead with take the deployment of Apache Storm and Kafka. So you need to take an update. And also, you need to install your February JDK. So for this demo, we have taken up, we have already installed uh, Open JDK 7. But if you want to go with Oracle JDK, you can of course go ahead with Oracle JDK for as a prerequisite for Apache Storm installation. And uh, after that, the basic prerequisite for running Apache Storm cluster is of course Zookeeper, the basic coordination services. So we would be installing Apache Zookeeper. And after installations of Apache Zookeeper, we need to also install Apache 0MQ, which is a direct package of Storm and also, you'd be working on deployment of ZMQ, ZMQ from Apache. So in this demo, in this entire demo, we would be working on installation of Apache Storm as well as Apache Kafka. So for Apache Kafka, we would be working on the installation of the package that's 0.8.2. So let me go ahead first with the steps. So here we had be working on the basic prerequisites installation that uh, first to take the update and then install the JDK and then go ahead and install Apache Zookeeper, then install Apache 0MQ and then ZMQ. So here in this cluster, we have already installed JDK. Take out the path. The basic path of uh, the default path of JDK in your cluster. So let's proceed with other required tool installation. So most uh, basically for uh, Storm installation, apart from JDK, we need some more other required tools like uh, one of them. That could be git, git tool. Another one that could be leap tool. That's the library tool. One tool would be automic. One tool could be UID dev. One tool could be G++. And one tool could be GCC. Multi-library. Prerequisite tools before go ahead with the deployment of Storm. And remember that these tools needs to be installed before installation of Zookeeper as well. So let me go ahead with the installation of the first one. This Git.
All right, let's proceed with the next tool. That's lib2, library2, hyphen y, that's a parameter. Proceed with the third tool installation. It's auto make. proceed with the deployment of the fourth tool deployment of the rest so I'm going to install G++ and the last one so the GCC compiler the GCC multi libraries So in the next step, we are intended to install Zookeeper. So what's actually the Zookeeper? If I need to just explain a little bit about Zookeeper. So Apache Zookeeper is of course, is a service. Um, it's a distributed coordinated, coordinating service uh, for maintaining A centralized information 
in a distributed environment using a small set of primitives and group services. So Storm uses Zookeeper primarily to coordinate state information state information such as task assignments worker status and various storm topologies storm topologies basically the matrices between storm nimbus and supervisors in a cluster So at this time of uh, when we are working, uh, one of the stable version is of Zookeeper, Apache Zookeeper, is 3.4.6, uh, which we are going to install for this demo. So of course you can download uh, this version of Zookeeper from any of the standard Apache middle location, and of course you can use one of the tool uh, for Linux like Carl or Wget, and you can download the respective package. You can use any of the mirror, like mirror simons.com slash software slash Apache slash Zookeeper slash Zookeeper 3.4.6 slash Zookeeper hyphen. 3.4.6.tar.gz so of course you can use any such types of standard apache mirror and you can download the respective uh, apache softwares like you can download zookeeper you can download storm you can you need to download kafka as well for the demo so let's check uh, all right we are done with installations of all prerequisites so what i done already is basically i'm having the zookeeper it's being downloaded with me so I'm directly going ahead with the installation of Zookeeper package so the first step that I need to do after uh, the downloading this package I need to extract this as a standard uh, tar tarball package extraction so I need to type tarxvf And it should go ahead and extract the package. All right, so it has been extracted. Now the next step would be it's basically to move it to a local Linux cluster, a local Linux directory. So you'd go ahead. To the location called user local zookeeper so to go ahead and move the folder to the respective location the next step would be so need to move inside this location so here as you can see we have extracted and after extraction we have moved already the extracted folder to the location now we need to move inside the conf directory where we need to make uh, basically a file called zoo.cfg so it will be quite similar with a zoo sample.cfg file so just make a copy of this and 
after that let's open the file Vim. Okay. So let's quickly install Vim. Right. Alternatively, you can open it with any standard text editor. Like, if you'd like to open it with gedit, of course, you can open it with gedit. So, what I'm doing here basically, I need to make a change with the Zookeeper data directory. So, here in this file, I just made an entry of the data directory location. So I'm making it as so local zookeeper. Slash data that would be my data directory for zookeeper. The client port number would be 2181. And uh, there is some of the parameters that you can check. The tick time is being mentioned as 2 milliseconds, uh, that's 200 milliseconds, 2000, 2000 milliseconds, that means 2 seconds. It, it represents that the numbers of milliseconds and each tick that would uh, the initial synchronization could take place. Actually, zookeeper consists of actually the Z nodes, which is the uh, master node services. Z node actually based on the architecture is called the leader follower. Tick time represents the time interval of the synchronizations by which the leader and follower could be synchronized among themselves. So the 2000 millisecond, that means two seconds, actually the time interval for the synchronization could take place. I-90 limit is a 10, that limits the numbers of ticks that can pass between sending a request and getting an acknowledgement. And sync limit is a it's actually uh, the request and getting acknowledgement details and uh, um, so it's actually the uh, maximum numbers of uh, syncs that could take place over a time interval particular time interval that's five sync limit so after the changes has been met uh, we can save and exit this file and one more thing that needs to be done is basically to create a directory for zookeeper data so just write slash data just create the directory after that just move and uh, go ahead with setting the class path in the environment settings of your Linux cluster for zookeeper so just write Here, just start to write about first you write you can write your Java home path so Java path you can quickly get it So just type stick out the default JDK path in your system. Let's copy it, paste it here. And next just give the path of your zookeeper home.
and let's export the path settings, the path variables. Just need to mention. So we have mentioned path um, Java home slash bin and zookeeper home slash bin path variables over there. So once we have done after this, we can save and exit right now. So this command would basically save the configuration path of zookeeper, the environment settings. Next, we can move inside the zookeeper home directory and go directly to the bin and inside the bin we can start the zookeeper service so, right so make sure that you have applied the settings in your bash rc by typing source bash rc and after that Let's go inside so keep our home slash bin and So let's start the Zookeeper server. Yes, it's being started. You can check with JPS. So the Zookeeper server is running. Next, we need to install 0MQ. So 0MQ is by default. Uh, Storm internally actually uses 0MQ. In the current version, it's to be explicitly to be, to be installed. Uh, maybe in the future release, they are planning to include it as a dependency to be a part of the storm distribution. So to get the zero MQ. So let's go ahead and install next ZMQ. So let's download the 0MQ package. So 
So let us extract the package first. And let's extract it. So after extraction, since we have already extracted, and now we need to configure this package. So make sure all our prerequisite tools um, that we have installed in the beginning, like GCC, G++, UID Dev, um, Git, LIB tools, that's all the tools are being installed properly before go ahead with the configurations environment of 0MQ, which is necessary for the storm deployment and building up the environment of storm. So after that, you need to type make. All right, the last step is just type sudo make install. So the next step, the next step could be um, just you need to configure after the deployment of 0MQ. Uh, next, you need to configure uh, basically for Java bindings, you need to configure. MQ. So, first of all, in order to get uh, the Java bindings for 0MQ, you need to make a clone from the GitHub. So, 
inside uh, 0 MQ directory itself you can get the clone just take out directory from the Nathan Morris repository that's gzmq dot git and take a clone of it in your local directory so this command basically would create a folder with a name called gzmq and after that you'll be able to see that the folder is being created inside the zmq directory and now just go inside the gzmq folder just navigate inside the folder and here inside gzmq just type Next step, just type Make sure Leap Tool is installed. Next, go ahead and ins um, just execute the shell of autogen, autogen.shell. So, just go ahead and execute the shell. Auto 
to that go ahead configure so that would create the configuration directory and environment for GZMQ and once you have done that just type make And finally, type sudo make install. So in the next step, we are good to go after this to configure Storm. So to configure Apache Storm, you can utilize any of the standard package, um, any of the standard mirror to download the Storm package. out any of the mirror standard mirror from Apache Software Foundation Just download it like any of the standard middle like this so for this demo what we did is basically we have already downloaded the storm package from a standard Apache mirror and uh, so for that we are good to go to proceed with the next step so since I have already the storm package that 0.9.1 incubating tar.gz is already with me so I can proceed with the next step for this untouring the tarball package so what i can write next is sudo tar hyphen xvf so it's done let's rename the directory to a storm now optionally you can add also um, the storm home in bash rc so just you can move it Storm path to user local. So add it this class path in bash rc. Just go inside bash rc file. Just export the storm home.
slash bin. So that's all the setup that we need. Storm home and also optionally you can add it the zookeeper home as well. Zookeeper home slash bin and same time you can add the Java path. Java home path, the default. So Java home slash bin, storm home slash bin, slash zookeeper home slash bin. That could be the default folder location. Once you have done up to this, you can save and exit, apply the settings. And after that, you need to configure the storm YAML. So let's configure this file storm.yaml. So this is one of the most important settings for storm installation. That's storm configuration. which is named as storm.yaml and in this file we need to take care of uh, the specific settings like we need to make sure that um, all the major values are very important and all the specific uh, the zookeeper server IP addresses port numbers that are very specific otherwise the storm servers would not ever be able to start uh, whether the master servers or uh, master services or the slave services it would not be able to start properly so inside the storm.yaml, we need to make sure that we are entering the proper values for Zookeeper servers, for Nimbus host, and for the rest of the ports appropriately. So let me check. Since it's a single node storm configuration, so I'll be giving all these IP addresses of the single node. So... Just make sure. Just remove the commands. In the Nimbus host, just add it. IP address it's 192.168.11.149 which is the local IP of this cluster and uh, to that you need to add the storm zookeeper port as well so this port would be 2181 And after that, you need to add the Nimbus thrift port, which could be the port number 6627. Next, you need to add the port number for Storm UI. So that could be the specific port number, whatever you are giving in your storm.yaml. Instead of this particular value, if you are giving, suppose, a UI port 8080, that's Apache Tomcat port number. So make sure that the port number would not ever be, it's being, um, it's never being interrupted with any other specific port number of any other services. So 8080 is the most default port number that we are used to give for us to specify any of the port number for any services. But it's having also the most of the chances to get overloaded or it sometimes gets interrupted with the other services port. So mostly it's the Tomcat port. So any of the clusters uh, which we don't recommend it to utilize that specific number. So I'm giving the UI port as 8772. Next. Um, 
the value that we need to give is a storm local directory path. And here to mention local data directory path. And next we need to mention the Java library path. Make a simple copy and paste. And after that, you need to make just need to add the port number for supervisor slots that Storm Worker Services port number. And you just need to add them. specific values make sure that how many spaces you are making that should be appropriate otherwise it would throw an error so that many changes we need to do that and after that you can save and exit once you have done up to this so next it's a very important thing is that should be able to start all the services so just can move inside the storm home bin and you need to start the respective services for storm So once you have started with this, just need to start with storm nimbus. In another terminal, you just can start with storm supervisor. That's a worker services. And in another terminal, you can start the UI. So once you have done all of this, let's pull up a browser. So basically, these three commands would start the three core services of Storm. Start Nimbus, uh, that Storm Nimbus, this first command would start the master services for Storm. Um, the second one, that start supervisor, just to don't close any of the terminal uh, where suppose Nimbus or UI services has been running. You need to open three separate terminals for that and you need to start up the services for that. So Storm Nimbus would start basically the master services for Storm. Storm Supervisor would start the worker services, the worker nodes, and Storm UI, that could be basically the UI port number. All right, so we are getting a small issues over there. So what I can do, let me stop. We can interrupt, let's come out. Stop all of the services. Anyway, as well. And open the storm home slash conf and open the storm.yaml.
So let's start spawn the services once again. Start the UI as well. Let's check the services are running or not. right so let's check right so most probably we are getting a permission issues so make sure that You have been given the sufficient permission. So just give permission appropriately so that storm services could start effectively. start Nimbus 
start supervisor sorry start UI So UI services has been also started. So let me check in the browser. Just type localhost and give the port number.
So all of our services are running actually. So probably Storm UI has not.
let's open the storm conf and just open the storm.yml So
All right. So the storm UI has been came up and uh, we have been already started. The storm UI has been available right now. So we have installed for this deployment is uh, storm 0.9.1 is an incubating package. Alternately, the current version that is 0.9.3 or 0.9.4, you can uh, of course try with this uh, similar process. And you'd be able to see the corresponding details like Nimbus uptime, supervisor used slots, free slots, total number of slots, task uh, that is being executed. Uh, correspondingly, if you just ran a topology, you'd be able to get the topology details like name, ID, status, number of workers, executors, and task. Supervisor, some is also you'd be able to get on the corresponding host which is being running along with ID details. Nimbus configuration side you'd be able to get uh, the keys like diso keeper path, uh, DRPC child ops, invocation port, DRPC port number, queue size, request timeout section, threads, library path, appender name, log viewer port, child ops, reassign, all the specific details that uh, you'd be able to get from um, the UI part itself. So the next package that we are intended to do for this demo is basically the Apache Kafka. So Apache Kafka is uh, and just in one word, just uh, what is Kafka? So Apache Kafka is nothing but it's a published subscribing mechanisms package in uh, Apache Hadoop, which is being nothing but uh, which provides um, just a service bus layer on Apache Hadoop and um, just if you just take that about the installation step of Apache Kafka or about the various architecture side on Apache Kafka so Kafka has basically five components one is called the topic so topic is a category or feed name to which the messages has been published uh, to the message by the message producers topics are actually partitioned and each partition is to be represented by the ordered immutable sequence of messages each message in this partition is to be assigned by an unique sequential id and uh, the next one is basically the broker so broker is a kafka cluster actually consists of the servers where uh, each one of them may have some server processes that's which are called as broker so topics has been created within the context of the broker process zookeeper servers actually that's it's actually, actually zookeeper is essential is a coordinating services so zookeeper serves as a coordinator between the kafka broker and consumer if we check about the producer producer is actually the they are actually responsible for publishing the data that's producers are actually producing the data so uh, to the topics by choosing the appropriate partitions within the topic and of course the consumers so consumers are responsible for the applications which are actually the, that's a real time end client or uh, processes that subscribe to the topics and process the feed or the published messages so kafka is being available from scala packages Two dot ten slash Kafka score two dot ten zero dot eight dot two dot one dot TGZ format. So the first question is how we can install Kafka. So in this demo, we first creating respective directory for Kafka. And you'd first start with the downloading of Kafka. So the version we are installing for this demo is actually the Scala edition. That's 2.10, 0.8.2.1.tgz format. So let's download the package first.
all right so kafka has downloaded so let's move the package first Let's extract the tarball of Kafka. After extraction, just navigate inside the directory of Kafka. So let me show you the structure of the Kafka package. So let me first install tree. So this is the structure for Kafka package. That's after extraction. So we have a bin folder. So within the bin, we have the directories, the corresponding shells like Kafka console consumer, Kafka console producer. We have a specific shells for consumer offset shaker, consumer perfect uh, uh, performance testing for mirror maker, for replica election, for producer performance tester, reassign partition, replica verification, run class, server start, server stop, etc. and Kafka topics as well. And also you'd be able to see the corresponding Zookeeper server start and stop shell as well. Um, under the configuration, we have specific consumer properties or server properties which is needed to start the Kafka server and the corresponding jar files. So let me first start the Kafka server. So to start the Kafka server, to run this volume command this bean kafka server start dot shell config server dot properties so this command go ahead and start the kafka server so if you are getting any issues uh, any errors like permission denied so make sure that you need to provide the appropriate permission. If you're getting insufficient memory exception, so just make sure 
can just increase the memory a bit. Just increase the memory of the VM. Just restart the guest. Try signing. Just increasing the memory.
So this command would go ahead and start the Kafka server. So the command that we have basically written to start the Kafka server is basically Kafka server start shell config server dot properties. So this command would basically would start the Kafka server um, before producing a message and consuming the message. So this command would basically start the server. So if you now check the JPS, so you'll be able to see that Kafka server has been started. So in this demo, you have seen that uh, about the various steps and processes about deployment of Apache Storm 0.9.1 in a single node cluster, not Hadoop cluster this time. We have just installed in a fresh Ubuntu 15.04 64-bit cluster where we need to install specific uh, prerequisites first in order to deploy the Ubuntu environment. We need to install OpenJDK. We need to install several uh, internal prerequisites like Git, LibTool, Automake, UUID Dev, G++, G GCC multi-libraries. Then we need to install Apache Zookeeper. We have installed Zookeeper 3.4.6. We need to install Apache 0MQ, that's Storm, because Storm internally uses 0MQ. So current version that needs to be installed explicitly. We have installed Java bindings for 0MQ, so just being um, probed with the Z, G, Z, G, Z, MQ and configured Apache Storm next. I just downloaded it from a standard mirror. So and then next we have configured the storm.yaml and after configuration of storm, we have worked on the installation of Apache Kafka. So that's all for this demo and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.